Hello and welcome. This is Annie from God in Scripture. And yesterday we contemplated the first sorrowful mystery, the agony in the garden. And today we are going to contemplate the second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. So before I go into the meditation, um, please remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and hit the bell button to be notified of any new videos as they come out. And do please share, like and comment on the video. Thank you. So the meditations today will come from Luke's Gospel, um, from the morning prayer, Divine Office morning prayer, and also from Anne Catherine Emmerich's Visions of the Scourging. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. And the first meditation is Zechariah chapter 12 from the Divine Office morning prayer today. Over the house of David and the citizens of Jerusalem, I will pour out a spirit of kindness and prayer. They will look on the one whom they have pierced. They will mourn for him as for an only son and weep for him as people weep for a firstborn child. When that day comes, there will be great mourning in Jerusalem. And from Luke chapter 23, verse 21 to 24. In his desire to set Jesus free, Pilate addressed them again, but they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! And for the third time he spoke to them, But what harm has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death, so I shall have him flogged and then let him go. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified, and their shouts kept growing louder. And the final meditation is from Anne Catherine Emmerich's Meditation on the Passion. Then the executioners, striking and pushing Jesus with their short staves, led him through the raging multitude on the forum to the whipping pillar, which stood in front of one of the halls that surrounded the great square, to the north of Pilate's palace and not far from the guardhouse. And now came forward to meet Jesus the executioner's servants with their whips, rods and cords, which they threw down near the pillar. There were six of them, swarthy men, all somewhat shorter than Jesus, with coarse, crisp hair, to whom nature had denied a beard other than a thin, short growth like stubble. Their loins were girded, and the rest of their clothing consisted of a jacket of leather or some other wretched stuff, open at the sides, and covering the upper part of the body like a scapula. Their arms were naked and their feet encased in tattered sandals. They were vile malefactors from the frontiers of Egypt, who as slaves and culprits were here employed on buildings and canals. The most wicked, the most abject among them were always chosen for the punishment of criminals in the Praetorium. These barbarous men had often scourged poor offenders to death at this same pillar. There was something beastly, even devilish, in their appearance, and they were half intoxicated. Although the Lord was offering no resistance whatever, yet they struck him with their fists and ropes, and with frantic rage dragged him to the pillar. Jesus trembled and shuddered before the pillar. With his own hands swollen and bloody from the tight cords, and in tremulous haste, he laid aside his garments while the executioners struck and abused him. He prayed and implored so touchingly, and for one instant turned his head toward his most afflicted mother, who was standing with the holy women in a corner of one of the porches. Turning to the pillar as if to cover himself by it, Jesus said, Turn thine eyes from me. I know not whether he said these words vocally or mentally, but I saw how Mary took them, for at the same moment I beheld her turning away and sinking into the arms of the holy women who surrounded her closely veiled. And now Jesus clasped the pillar in his arms. There stood the holy of holies, divested of clothing, laden with untold anguish and ignominy, stretched upon the pillar of criminals while two of the bloodhounds, with sanguinary rage, began to tear with their whips the sacred back from head to foot. Our Lord and Saviour, the Son of God, true God and true man, quivered and writhed like a poor worm under the strokes of the criminal's rods. He cried in a suppressed voice and a clear, sweet-sounding wailing, like a loving prayer under excruciating torture. 
formed a touching accompaniment to the hissing strokes of his tormentors. Many voices cried out together, Away with him! Crucify him! For Pilate was still negotiating with the people. The uproar was so great that he wanted to utter a few words. Silence had to be enforced by the flourish of a trumpet. At such moments could be heard the strokes of the rods, the moans of Jesus, the blasphemy of the executioners, and the bleating of the paschal lambs which were being washed in the pool near the sheep gate to the east. The helpless bleating of the lambs had in it something indescribably touching. They were the only sounds in unison with the Saviour's sighs. They had been at work about a quarter of an hour when they ceased to strike and joined two of the others in drinking. Jesus' body was livid, brown, blue and red and entirely covered with swollen cuts. His sacred blood was running down on the ground. He trembled and shuddered. Derision and mockery assailed him on all sides. The second pair of scourges now fell upon Jesus with fresh fury. They made use of different rods, rough as if set with thorns, and here and there provided with knots and splinters. Under their furious blows, the swollen welts on Jesus' sacred body were torn and rent. His blood spurted around, so that the arms of his tormentors were sprinkled with it. Jesus moaned and prayed and shuddered in his agony. The last two scourges struck Jesus with whips consisting of small chains or straps fastened to an iron handle, the ends furnished with iron points or hooks. They took off whole pieces of skin and flesh from his ribs. Oh, who can describe the awful barbarity of that spectacle? But those monsters had not yet satiated their cruelty. They loosened the cords that bound Jesus and turned his back to the pillar and because he was so exhausted as to be no longer able to stand. They bound him to it with fine cords, passed under his arms, across his breast and below the knees. His hands they fastened to the ring in the middle of the opposite side. Only barbarously mangled flesh could be seen on the most sacred, most venerable body of the Son of God. Like furious bloodhounds raged the scourges with their strokes. One held a slender rod in his left hand and with it struck the face of Jesus. There was no longer a sound spot on the Lord's body. He glanced with eyes swimming in blood at his torturers and sued for mercy, but they became only the more enraged. He moaned in fainting tones, woe, woe. The terrible scourging had lasted fully three quarters of an hour. Several times during the scourging I saw weeping angels around Jesus and during the whole of that bitter, ignominious punishment that fell upon him like a shower of hail, I heard him offering his prayer to his Father for the sins of mankind. But now as he lay in his own blood at the foot of the pillar, I saw an angel strengthening him. It seemed as if the angel gave him a luminous morsel. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Thank you for listening and may God bless you. And remember to look out tomorrow for the third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns. Good night and God bless.